Good evening, how are you today? Well, it's overcast, looks like it could rain, but it's, it's pretty comfortable, and uh, I'm out to examine what happened today. Uh, I have some really good stories, you know. Our boy Alex Jones, what do you think happened to him? Well, you know what happened to him on the way to court today? A jury decided that his damages were worth one billion, B, billion dollars. Isn't that sweet? Ouch! Does he have it? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> put him in a pauper cell. <clears throat> and uh, I hear the government, uh, this one is a mixed uh, case, I think. Avenatti, I thought it was very impressive, not knowing exactly how his mind worked or what else he was doing. But he seemed to, to have it going the right way. And I got anxious that he would be less effective when he got uh, Potomac fever, namely that he thought, maybe I should run for president, you know? And people just don't get it. You have to, these temptations to do something you haven't done your whole life, uh, I mean, in his case, to say run for Congress or something before running for president based on a single case involving <laughs> bribery with, with the president of the United States, Mr. Trump. So they want to give him 17 years in custody. I contemplate that. He gets 17 years for cheating her out of, I don't know, some amount of money. And we have Trump, who would have destroyed the entire government in order to become president in an election that he lost. Where is the equity in that? And, you know, if Avenatti did these things, I'm sure he's, he should be sentenced to something. But I wonder if he became a target to destroy and crush into the earth someone who took the wrong position against Trump. And you may remember Avenatti saying on the air things like, I've got into his mind, I've got rental space in Trump's mind, such as it is. So there's that. Uh, tomorrow, the January 6th committee meeting is on. And at this hearing, I, the way I'd characterize it from what I've understood about it is it's kind of, what did Trump know and when did he know it? In other words, they're going to address the question of knowledge and intent to commit the crimes that he did. More particularly, and it'll be interesting to see this if it's true, is whether or not he knew that violence was contemplated on January the 6th. And the evidence apparently indicates he knew. Well, this doesn't surprise any of us. And it raises the continuous question, which is, are we there yet? Why aren't we prosecuting this guy? He's standing out in the, squ the square, jumping around, doing his little dance that he does, which is not very impressive uh, musically or <laughs> artistically. Um, saying, yeah, oh, you know what? Those were my documents. Hey, you know what? Yeah, I knew. You know what? Uh, I should have been elected. You know, you know, it's just all this goes on. And I, I sort of picture Garland hiding in a corner of the office that Bobby Kennedy uh, occupied. And I've been in that office. I, I'm not the only one. A lot of people have been in that office. And I always imagine from having seen the pictures when Bobby Kennedy was in that office. And I just, I can't see Garland in that office. I saw Janet Reno in that office, uh, visited with her. And she spoke so passionately about justice and what she was going to try to do and what her concerns were that men and women I was with who knew her before that meeting were crying crying that they were going to have an attorney general who was going to be different, who was going to be in the mold of Robert Kennedy, who was going to be one of the greats. It's a very hard job. Now, uh, more about Trump. He's going to have a deposition. And uh, it's that uh, defamation case in which uh, the, uh, I guess she's, I, well, she's a writer, E. Jean Carroll. And uh, so the judge has approved a deposition for Trump. Uh, I wish I was doing that deposition. I wish I was in the grand jury asking this guy questions. I don't know if you've heard it said or not, but uh, as a result of, uh, you know, paying attention to what Rachel Maddow was doing uh, with this uh, podcast that I, I had 
the marvelous opportunity to update this little investigation I'd done about a plane crash. Uh, I followed what she said about her new series. And it's interesting because she's saying maybe our criminal law doesn't know how to handle strong political figures. Well, that's not as dramatic now as it might have been if she said it a year and a half ago. And I'm sure it's because she's been observing and thinking about the failure of our system to deal with these huge crimes. And think about what and who among the greatest have been brought down by criminal cases. Now, we did have the vice president for Nixon, and Nixon was run out of office, but he wasn't prosecuted, but he was hounded with cases the rest of his life. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an interesting challenge, but apparently it spills over here. That is to say, if you're not prosecuting Trump and you're not prosecuting the people he's associated with, how do you rein in the chaos that would destroy a democracy? That's really pretty terrible. And that's, that's, the, uh, that's the problem that we have. Finally, for us uh, animal lovers, 477 pilot whales have been stranded on beaches in New Zealand, and apparently without any chance of surviving. It's interesting how we spend money and energy on so many of the wrong things and don't have the time or energy to get it right. I've, uh, I've had the benefit, I suppose, of knowing people that were righteous and for some reason or other, I thought to uh, mimic them. And I've been helped along the way by people who maybe thought I was worth helping, that I would, I would do something useful. And the DNA that makes this mind work <laughs> uh, has, has given me a great life, you know. So as long as the synapses aren't fused, I'm, I'll probably be okay. <laughs> so that's, uh, that's my meandering thought about what's going on now. I look forward to seeing what happens at the hearing tomorrow. And I'm particularly concerned, if this is it, that they at least have a short report commending the prosecution of these worthless politicians who would have destroyed our government and are still saying the kind of thing. 299 of the candidates this year are saying that the election was a fraud. Uh, people like that should be driven from the house of justice, driven from the home of democracy, driven from the people's government because they are not for the people, not of the people, not by the people. They are autocrats who would destroy this uh, experiment in democracy. And we don't want this to be the end of it, but if we don't wake up and do well in these midterms, we'll be on a slippery slope headed toward the presidential election. And we can point at officers of the government who failed the test to be a part of the solution and instead they're part of the problem. Cowardly, pale profiles, discouraging one and all. So here I am in our cathedral of trees enjoying another day talking with you guys hope to talk to you again tomorrow bye bye